Hey guys, this is Patrick Sessoms with Do South Outfitters, fly shop and guide service of Boone and Banner Elk, North Carolina. Today on the Educated Angler, we wanted to list the top nine things that we see you'll need as an angler on the river. So if you have these things, you should be able to be fishing somewhat proficiently. Um, so it's almost like a little packing list. So you're headed out to get fishing on your own and just want to make sure you've got all the accoutrement you need. This is it. Let's talk about this. Number one, a net. We like nets because they help us land fish. <laughs> and one thing about a net, guys, we do like nets that have these rubber baskets. They come in all shapes, sizes, lengths, etc. If you have a question about what we prefer, Hit us up, we'd be glad to shoot, you know, kind of dial you in on that. But um, the rubber basket does two things. It protects the fish's slime layer to help prevent any injury to the fish. It also keeps your flies from getting as tangled in the, in the net. It's like, say, an old school mesh style net. So, landing net, number one. Number two, let's talk about this, fly box. So you need a good way to store your flies. This is a tacky box. These are nice boxes, um, hold the flies really well for us. They come in all shapes, sizes, all kinds of different fly boxes on the market, but get you some kind of storage device, fly box of sorts, because nothing's worse than opening up like a little container and dumping all your flies in the river. I've done it, it's not fun. <laughs> you never get them back. So uh, anyways, good fly box. Number three, here's a safety device. I see a lot of people wade fishing without a wading belt on. Let's get in the habit of using one. The reason we do that, guys, is it prevents your waders from filling up if you were to fall over and uh, can ultimately save your life, keep you from drowning. So make sure you've got a wading belt. They come in all different you know, forms. This one's a stretch wading belt. Some are hard, or not hard, but static nylon, I should say. They don't really stretch. But get you a wading belt. It could be just as simple as your everyday belt you put around your waders, but wear a wading belt. On to some more of like our kind of fishing hardware. Let's start off with this. Tip it and leader, make sure you've got them. Check with your local fly shop on, you know, kind of reference on what size leaders and tippets you'll be needing to fish, where you're going. But tip it and leader, definitely have a good stock of these. If you're gonna be doing any kind of subsurface fishing, whether it's streamer fishing, nymph fishing, make sure you got a good selection of split shot. This stuff helps to get your flies down to the fish in the strike zone. So split shot, really important. If you are nymph fishing or subsurface fishing with bugs, strike indicators. These are thingamabobbers. There's tons of different kinds of strike indicators. We'll do a video on those here shortly um, to highlight the differences of your strike indicators. But make sure you got some sort of strike indicator if you're going to nymph fish. Next up, we'll talk about a couple tools. Forceps. Make sure you get a pair of these. They're going to help you remove hooks from the fish's jaw. Make sure you prevent any added duress of angling. You know, the goal here, guys, we're big advocates of catch and release. We wanna make sure we protect these fish. We don't harm them whenever we do catch them and release them. Um, forceps will definitely help you out. One thing I'd like to mention about this particular pair made by Reddington, and I think Dr. Slick makes some as well, but these have a built-in cutter in the jaw as well. I really like that because I have kind of two tools in one. I've got forceps and clippers in the same thing. Um, but even if you don't have these, just make sure you get a pair of forceps. They'll help you remove flies. Next up, my clients love to pick on me. I've got a bad habit of biting tippet and biting line. Don't do it, guys. It's bad for your dental health. <laughs> get you a pair of forceps, or excuse me, not forceps, clippers. This is a pair of rising clippers or nippers, whatever you want to call them. Um, they're great. You know, just make sure you keep a pair on your vest or on your pocket, whatever. Um, I mean, heck, even just a pair of fingernail clippers will work, guys, but just something to trim line with so you don't end up like me with dull teeth. But uh, yeah, so nippers are important. And last but not least, one other thing, rounding it out at number nine, would be some floating. If you're fishing dry flies at all, or if you use any kind of uh, strike indicator, like a wool indicator, something like that, that needs a little bit of added buoyancy, 
you do want some floating of some kind. I personally will carry at the bare minimum a tube of gink, which is like a silicone gel, and a bottle of either loon dust or frog's fanny or um, magic dust. There's all kinds of both gel style floatants and dust style floatants. But at the bare minimum, I'm gonna keep a gel and a dust floating on me at all times. As with anything guys, there's a million different ways to do this stuff and I'm sure there's a lot more stuff we could have added into our pack or things we could have taken off. But this is just some stuff that we recommend carrying with you as you fish. Um, if you guys have any other suggestions or would like to add in you know, a couple things you usually bring with you that we may have not listed here, please add it in the comments. We'd love to hear some feedback. And until next time guys, we hope this helps and thank you for uh, tuning in to The Educated Angler. We'll see you guys next time. Tight lines.